Steve Dotto here. Today we're going to take a look at the dawning of a new era for Gmail. Is it really? Well, it is a significant upgrade that they have added to the service just in the last little while by allowing us to now start to integrate Gmail with Google Drive. What this does, the Google Drive, of course, the online storage system. The biggest feature is now the ability to include massive attachments in our emails. Now, in the past, we've had all these workarounds in order to send large files. We've used tools like Dropbox and other online services in order for us to store and then forward large files. We weren't able to embed them right within the body of an email, making it that much more convenient. Well, that has changed with the, with the new release of uh, capabilities within Gmail. Let, let's take a look back at the way things were. When we try and compose or send a larger attachment with the current version of uh, Gmail and with indeed with many, many different uh, email solutions that we have out there, I'm going to compose a new message. I have a large file that I want to send. I try and attach that file. And in my case here, let's say it's a 70 megabyte file. And really, by today's standards, that's not that huge. We have lots of different videos and audio files and graphics that are that large. But it says, oh, oh, there's an error. This file exceeds the 25 megabyte attachment limits. And then they apologize. Sorry. Well, I'm sorry too. And uh, they don't need to apologize much anymore because there now is a better way. So here's how you actually go about using the new larger attachment size uh, limits within Gmail. And the first thing you need to do is we need to enable the new compose window. Now what ha has happened is Google has changed the way or changed the interface for composing emails, theoretically to make it easier, but also to add this, this new feature. So it's easy to do. When you go in and create and compose a new email and click on compose, right here, just in the top bar, it says try out the new compose experience. We need to click on that and then that will launch us into the new compose window in the new structure. So it goes right back into our inbox. And now what's going to do is it's going to walk us through a little bit of a tutorial on using the new compose window. So you click your way through the tutorial. Once you've done that, you're ready to start using the new compose window. Now, one of the first things that you will notice with the new compose window is it appears and pops into a corner in the bottom corner of your web browser screen. Now you might wonder why it's doing that instead of starting a whole new screen. Well, the main reason, as far as I'm concerned, is typically speaking, when we're writing an email, we're responding to something which has already come before. We're not often creating or we're not usually creating something new. So here we can still see the existing email in the window so that we can comment. It makes it a little bit easier from that perspective to, to have context as we write. If you don't like this option, you just click on the arrow and it pops it up into the center of the screen. Now, it's, they've got some other nice little features, a little bit better integration with your calendar, with your, not with your calendar, although it is with your calendar as well, but better integration with your contacts and other things. And as, the main differences that you'll find are down here in the very bottom. This is where you've got additional options added to this Compose window. And of course, what we are talking about today is attaching a file. So if I just click on Attach File, I should be able to select that great large file, shouldn't I? Open it up, and now it should put that 70 gigabyte file in. Whoa, wait a minute. It didn't do it. <laughs> That's because the attachment limit's still the same. We're not going to be using the classic attachment way. It says you're trying to send a 25 megabyte file, too large, but look at the new option. Send it instead using Google Drive. Ah, that is the magic. Let me close this down. Instead, I'll go into it by just clicking on the Google Drive icon here in my pop-out, and that allows me to now start adding the attachments with Google Drive a little more control. So here I've got the ability to upload files if I haven't already uploaded them from my computer into my Google Drive, which will then allow me to share them. Now, I've already uploaded that file, and if you want to upload one, you just click the file and drag it in, or you can navigate as well through, through a dialog box, but you can also just drag and drop, and then it'll upload it. A file like this one, 70 gigabytes, it's really going to, megabytes, excuse me, 70 megabytes, it's going to take as long as your internet connection takes. But here's my drive. I've already got this one, this new big file uploaded. So I'm going to insert that now into an email. And now it inserts here as an attachment. I'm just going to send this to myself because I don't, it's really not for anybody else. There we go. And here's the next kind of cool thing that happens. When I click send with this, I get a new dialog box. This drive isn't shared with that recipient, so I'm sending it to somebody new. Now, how do you want to share this file? Anyone can view it, anyone can comment, or anyone can uh, edit it. You have these options. These are the same basic file sharing options as you have within Google Drive, but now those, those, uh, those settings are embedded as it goes out by email. And there's even more options. If people, you can choose a, only people who have a Google account 
can do this. And then if you choose that, you have the same options available to you. Now, why do you want to have these options at this point here? Well, sometimes, not necessarily when we're sending a movie like I am, but if you're sending a shared document that you're working on, you want to be able to let people read it. You might want people to be able to collaborate and work on it with you. So that sets all of those different permissions. But now you even have more control because once you set these permissions here, you send it out saying anybody can edit it. And then once they've done that, if, if you allow them to edit it, then a little while later, if once you want to lock the document down and not let anybody edit it anymore, you can go back into your Google Drive. You can go into the document itself, in this case, this particular document, and you can change the sharing settings by clicking on the share button here. And that allows you to change the sharing that's set up for anybody who has it. So you can later on revoke or enable permissions based on your sharing of the files. It gives you a lot of flexibility as far as doing collaboration and sharing different documents. Uh, let's go back into the editor for just a moment. And oh, that's one of the interesting things about this. The, this mail window seems to pop out after, and you, it might get head that, hidden. That's one of the reasons you might want to leave it attached to the bottom. Uh, there was some other, oh, I know what I want to show you. After using all of these different tools, and there are some additional features down here. This is the one that I like the most, is the ability to send an invitation or a calendar item right from within the email, not having to go into the calendar in order to invite people to a meeting or anything like that. Really nice feature that I like a lot within the new, uh, the new interface within Gmail. But if you're not like me, if you don't like this new interface, you just click down here on this button here and you can actually go back to the old Compose system and you can do things the old way if you choose. Gmail is, uh, for a lot of people, it's becoming their main email interface. And every time they add another layer of features, another group of people say, hey, this is the best way for me to sh use and to do my email. I think this this last attach, this last uh, addition with the large attachment size and the slightly new interface, it's a step in the right direction. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, give us a like, give us some props. Don't forget you can subscribe to all of our videos here at Dotto Tech. I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for spending time with me today.